Motor vehicle crashes are the number one killer of school-aged children in the United States. And this is a risk that parents don't fully appreciate. We've seen, seen studies with anywhere from 63 to 90 percent of child safety seats are misused. We, we find that parents are often anxious to switch from one phase to the next as quickly as possible, but they really should try to avoid that because every time you switch from one type of restraint to the next, your child is actually less safe. Um, switching from rear facing to forward facing, switching from a harness restraint to a booster seat, children are able to move around and more likely to be out of position. Parents want to be able to see their kids. They feel like they don't want to take their kid in a baby seat to school, so they're moving kids out of five-point harnesses and into booster seats or seat belts too early. For any child in a crash, the most commonly injured body region is the head. For infants, because their head is so big relative to the rest of their body, we really need to have a rear-facing seat so the head and torso are supported together. Frontal crashes are the most frequent and the most um, deadly crash that we see in the U.S. So if a child's rearward facing in a frontal crash, the force of the crash gets distributed all along the back of their head and, and the back of their body. It also makes sure that their head and torso stay relatively aligned during the crash event. You can imagine if you're forward facing, you have two straps holding back your shoulders, your head's free to come forward. And we see a lot of really severe neck loading in those situations. Recently we were able to do a study where we brought parents in who had some experience with child safety seats and we observed their process for installing different types of child seats in, in different types of vehicles. We were able to identify features on child restraints and features in vehicles that seemed to allow people to have, have fewer mistakes when they were installing their child restraints. So by identifying these features, we've identified some design goals for vehicle manufacturers and child restraint manufacturers that could help make their vehicles and products easier to use. So that w opens up a range of ways that we can attack that misuse problem. We've put together a website of, called CPS Best Practice and we've gone through the research literature and trying to say this is why we recommend rear facing longer, this is why we recommend not stepping forward to a booster until um, you outgrow your harness restraint. And as part of this website we have videos explaining so parents can look at a car seat check and you know use their phones to call up a video and saying oh look this is why we say rear facing is better than forward facing. If you look at the data the rear seat is very rarely used by adult occupants but all of the seats and um, seatbelt systems are tuned and tested for adult protection. What I think the next big question is, and, and something that we've done some work here at Umtree on, is tailoring rear seats and vehicles for the people that actually use them. So we'd like to see more situations where that second row and third row seat environment is more amenable to child passengers. Small children, people who are sitting in the rear seat, people who are sitting in the front seat, and the focus of this study are older senior population. Oh,